What's going on there folks? Good evening, Earthmaster here checking in on the live stream with a quick update uh, on this Thursday evening. May 13, 2021 is the date, uh, a little bit of aftershock activity to report. Following the earthquake activity we've seen throughout the uh, last 24 hours or so around the uh, uh, this beautiful planet we live on. Of course, Japan had a 6.0 earthquake uh, just off the east coast there, right around the Fukushima area. A 4.4 magnitude aftershock has been reported in that region. Uh, but so far, that's about the only one the USGS is listing there for uh, aftershock activity. A little bit of further movement on the uh, last hour earthquake activity in that red circle showing the 4.8 movement um, near the Indonesia Islands area. Somewhat deep, 60 or uh, 65.8 kilometers below surface. Uh, and some further movement along the Kermadec Trench area. This uh, five-pointer occurring a little bit before that 6.0 struck in the uh, uh, in the Japan area. And we're seeing a little bit of aftershock activity adjustment right around the Panama area, uh, south of Costa Rica. Actually, a little swarming of uh, movement away from the main quake that struck earlier today, that six-pointer near Panama. Uh, specific aftershock activity right around there shows a uh, well it just shows about a 4.6 there but we're looking at a pair of aftershocks or, or possibly hopefully not uh, four shocks to something bigger uh, about oh, it looks like 120 miles or so from the six pointer down here to the south along the Panama fracture zone so we're going to have to keep a close eye on this as, uh, of course, any adjustment up here could ultimately affect areas that may be sensitive and locked. That's all kind of kind of always why I worry about the activity in Southern California, you know, triggering the big one. As far as 2.0, uh, 2.5 and above here along the West Coast, uh, there has been a little bit of earthquake activity. Uh, this one here in the southern section of the uh, Cascadia Mega Thrust area, it's kind of right there too, right smack dab on the subduction zone. Uh, that's that plate boundary right as it begins to subduct. That 3.0 striking pretty shallow too, 3.7 kilometers below surface. Uh, just uh, That's kind of a little concerning when we see something right smack dab as it subducts there. Uh, but well, I had, definitely have to keep an eye on that region. I'm not ready for that thing to blow. Or pop, I should say. 3.3 uh, um, ch -ch 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 way earlier, probably last night, uh, early this morning there in the Blanco Fracture Zone at 3.3. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot of movement in the 2.5 and above department. We're looking at uh, micro, micro uh, quake activity in south, uh, south part of the state. Nothing major to report, folks, just some uh, movement along the San Jacinto, San Jacinto area and some uh, activity around the Ridgecrest region. But overall, things relatively quiet in Southern California. Uh, we are looking at Utah uh, area, seeing an increase in earthquake activity throughout the range here, across this uh, mountain range around Cedar City, St. George, uh, and up through the uh, uh, the mountain ranges here, which there's quite a few of them. Just uh, some microquake activity for now. Kind of keep an eye on that region as well. Um, other than that, not a whole lot of movement uh, there in the Alaska area. We're seeing uh, your typical, typical microquake activity inland around Anchorage and other areas to the south uh, and west. Uh, what else we got here? Chile did see a little earthquake earlier. Uh, 4.7, 43 kilometers below surface. Uh, so overall, folks, just kind of watching uh, watching these plates at the moment. I mean, there's been a lot of movement throughout the day today. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at, um, hold on a second here, this is the last seven days of 4.5 and above. And you can see most of this activity, the six-pointers and whatnot, borderline six-pointers, um, have occurred uh, within the last week or so. These are, you've got to watch these quiet areas uh, quite often. And areas such as, uh, you know, this is kind of filling in a little bit around the Japan area. I've said uh, in many videos to watch this region for potentially a, a mega quake. I just don't think we've seen enough release of pressure here in this area. Uh, I think if we see a couple more sixes in the area, uh, then it may fill in that void. But there's certain areas along the Japan Trench that have not seen any significant movement in quite some time. 
Um, quiet areas do kind of tell a tale of where uh, stress is building up, but not all the time. Um, you know, it just kind of gives us a general idea of, of where to look for potentially for the next movement of earthquake activity. West Coast, man, just we have not seen anything significant, 4.5 and above. Uh, although we did see those fives um, way back, beyond a week, up along the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, we haven't really seen any type of movement within the last week or so, uh, aside from those uh, small little quakes there on the uh, Cascadia. Tremor department shown an increase in earthquake activity, or uh, tremor, <laughs> tremor activity in the uh, southern section once again along the Cascadia. I was uh, waiting for this one to pop up today, see what we were looking at. Looks like we may be returning to some further uh, intense movement along the Cascadia in the southern section once again. It will be interesting to see if this uh, comes into a uh, full-blown uh, tremor movement along this area that we've seen over the past few weeks. So kind of keeping an eye on that region. 373 epicenters of tremor uh, confined to the southern section of the Cascadia subduction zone. As far as solar weather activity goes, we're kind of entering into a quiet spell for now. Uh, no major coronal holes, although potentially later on this week we could get something up here from this uh, center facing uh, coronal hole depending on how, um, how active this region is. Uh, something to pay attention to for potentially some further uh, activity. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see here. Flare? Flare activity? I don't believe we're looking at anything potentially. Maybe, um, uh. Let me see here. I don't think, I mean, looking at the sun, there is some sunspots right there, but not anything significant. These look like they may be decaying a little bit. But uh, hopefully we'll start picking up there in the uh, solar weather department for sure. Yellowstone National Park. Checking that activity in the uh, region there. Shows the six-pointer that struck in Japan. That's going to be the signature on the seismograph stations. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of movement, folks. I mean, it's relatively quiet there at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, just wondering when that's going to change. I mean, it's just way, way too quiet uh, for earthquake activity there. All right, guys, have a good night. I hope everyone stays safe out there. Things are uh, definitely been getting interesting. I think they're going to continue for a while. Um, 3.1 up there in Alaska at the moment along the Aleutian Islands. This is a lot more movement that we've seen on the globe in quite some time. So um, I, I just don't think it's going to calm down. I think we're going to see a pretty steady increase um, around the region. So... Just be on guard. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys uh, tomorrow sometime. Have a good night. Peace out.